Hey guys, and today we're going to be showing you how to replace your uh, 4.6 Mustang GT intake. So stay tuned. First thing we got to do is remove a uh, torsion box. And basically that's what we're doing right now. Your car probably don't have this. If it does, your car is awesome. So after you get that removed, we'll show you the next step. Okay, before we start, the next thing you want to do is bleed your fuel pressure off. There's two ways to do this. You can remove the relay to the fuel pump or the fuse to the fuel pump turn the key on when it dies back out then you know the pressure has gone there is an inertia switch in the trunk of this car you can take a little one way fit in it the button will pop up and then you can start it that way and pretty much hit the bleed the pressure off like that when the car stalls out uh, when you want to Add the fuel pump kit back on, just smash the wheel web button on the nostril switch and hit it come back on after you get the install and everything done. But definitely bleed the pressure off this intake before you remove it on the fuel lines and stuff. Next thing you want to do is remove your aftermarket intake or your bleeder box. Once that's out of the way, you can move on to the next step. Oh my god, I forgot to say it. It's been a rough day. Don't forget to unhook your wires before this step. You got five bolts on your uh, intake right here that holds down your uh, throttle body. One here, one here, one here, one here, and one over here. And nope. then once you get them out, you can pick them up and go. That one's different. That's for a bracket. This, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Well, what Clay just said. Then once you get that, you can go ahead and do your four bolts on the fuel oil, which is one there, and one over here, one there, and one here. Then pull up on your fuel oil. Make sure you bled your fuel off this fuel line, and you'll be good to go. Okay, once you get the fuel oil off, pretty much this is the coolant on the intake it ain't from that it's from this breaking for the heater hose and we are pretty much replacing this whole intake because of this problem which is pretty common they either crack the or they crack up front here now next thing you want to do once you get this fur and you get your fuel well popped off we just laid this into the side you can pretty much undo your radiator hose the upper radiator hose needs to come out and this bracket right here support bracket needs to come off and then you need to drain your radiator and catch your fluid if you can if you don't want to reuse fluid drain your radiator because you don't want no coolant trapped in this motor when you take this intake off because right now it's full so next step drain the radiator and take off your upper radiator hose Okay, next step, once you get your radiator drained on your hoses, you can remove the alternator if you want to. We're going to try without removing the alternator, which I believe it can be done. And pretty much you got four bolts on the intake. One here, one here, one here, one here. One here, one here, one here, one here. Yeah, bracket with your with it. Yeah, it comes off with it. There's more than four bolts there. Well, there's five bolts. Six bolts. You got two bolts on the thermostat neck, have to come off, then you got a bolt here, then you got, well you got a lot of bolts basically. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get that removed, the next step if you got coils, is to remove the coils. This and that got coils, this has got plug wires, and I'm pretty sure we can change this intake without even having to remove the plug wires. Which is a win-win for us. Well, we actually get to see here in a few minutes. If we are correct or not. Okay, as you can see, we pretty much had to loosen the alternator to pull the intake forward. That's probably good, Tony. We'll probably just let that later. And next thing, we're going to try with the intake off. Okay, I pretty much installed the new gasket onto the throttle body. And this is the intake. We had to bend the little coolant tube that's in the valley just a tiny bit because this intake is a little bit wider on the bottom and uh pretty much it's a police interceptor intake so it's cast you know bigger runners and stuff and it has a screw in thing right here which is awesome 
you don't have that piece of plastic to have to worry about. It should be a nice little upgrade for this car. We have got the injectors and everything installed in it now, so go ahead, Tony, set that over in it. Wars. That's where she goes. No, it ain't. Hmm? <laughs> There's where she goes. Give or take. Yeah, give or take a centimeter or two. But yeah, that's what goes, Tony. The gasket setting on it good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Double check everything. Because we don't want to have to do anything over. Start our bolts. And then we need to start this pipe into this section you right here. Tighten this down first. You don't leave it a little loose. Because you want to work this pipe in it. Is that a sticker? It is a sticker. I don't think that's right. Bolt sit, Tony. That's too short. Hmm? That's too short. That's too short. <laughs> Well, before we find the boats that Tony, he's the boat keeper. We mind us not letting him keep boats no more. <laughs> Man, I put my thing on this up there so we didn't lose none. Yeah, look, we didn't lose none. We might got them mixed up a little bit, but. But we didn't lose none. That's going to be painful. Yeah, you might have to start that before. Yeah. Yeah. Well, start your pipe before. Let's take them all back out. <laughs> wow, we got one, two, three, four hands here. I think boats out. Ain't that something? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Get on that side, Tony. Gonna... Then we can tighten it once we get it on there. Alright. Okay. Yeah, this boat started. This boat started. Good. Well, as we get this intake on bolted down, I will let you see what's coming next. So, we're going to tighten this down. Yep, okay. next you want to tighten all your bolts up. Make sure all your plug wires is plugged in. And then go around here and tighten this up. Adjustable works fine. Once that is tightened up, you can go ahead and hook your vacuum hoses up, which is here. And then you can go over here and hook your throttle and everything back up. And then you can hook his heater hose up. Oh, fun, fun times, ain't it, Cray? Fun times. Look, you got an actual interceptor intake on it. As for power-wise, we don't know if it increased it or not. We will have to wait and see. This is how your throttle will look hooked up. Just like this. Your vacuum lines hook into the other, travels over to here, into here, back up, back over, and you got another one goes one over one. to here. Okay, once you get this, pretty much your intake's bolted back on, all your lines hooked up, everything's tight, double check everything. Put your fuel pump fuse back in, or your nusher switch, mash that button back in, whichever one you did. Prime your injector wells up, and check the fuel injectors, and see if they're leaking, because you don't want it to be leaking on you, and it's best to find it now, and then... Later on down the road, and you catch the car on fire. Yeah, then you want to top your radiator off with a fluid, and then you will want to start it and check for leaks because you don't want no coolant leaks. It got dark fast on us, didn't it? It sure did. Yeah. What the music? Nah. Wait a bit a little bit, Clay. I tell you, it sure has the sound in it. Okay, final step, 
we check for leaks we have no leaks next step is pretty much we bolt this ball back on and then we test drive the car and we give you an update on it after we test drive it hello guys update on the mustang test drive is pretty much great increase it's more smoother it runs a whole lot better and it does got more of a torquey feel to it you know it it's hard to explain it's got more grunt as you get into the throttle which you can tell by the exhaust made a big difference now i don't know if it's where it's a police interceptor intake but pretty much you compile the intakes the runners and stuff on the bottom of it is way bigger way wider we had them actually modify the coolant tube to clear the intake to make it work on the mustang it could be where it's a newer model intake because that vic is an o2 i think 4.6 or 98 or 99 for, for a 2000 model v6 whatever was in the junkyard it's one of those models. Anywho, that intake is what's on that car now. And it was a great... Yeah, it, compared to the stock one, you've got one now. A good upgrade for you. You can actually hear the sound, hear the difference in the sound, and drive the car and tell the power increase. Yeah, so it might be worth something checking into. Poor parts. Always... Like, how much you want for an intake? I'll take it out 50 bucks. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal for that. It surprised me. But, would you just, I should have did a side by side on them. You should have seen the comparison. Huge difference. I mean, very huge difference. On top, looks the same. Underneath, no one, no, not the same. But yeah, I don't know if it was for it's a P71 interceptor intake, or if it was for it was a newer style intake could be either one of them be worth checking into and it might be something specific for the police cars the old cruisers the old crown vet cruisers and until next time i see you then i hope you enjoyed this video and until next time of course i said it again